Friends, those of you that are here, I'm excited to be here tonight because this is really a fun event for all of you that are interested in joining band um, in fourth grade or fifth grade, whenever you're liking to join. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about, briefly about what fourth grade band is. <clears throat> fourth grade band um, is sort of an exploratory, introductory um, option for fourth graders to begin their uh, instrumental uh, instrument learning. Um, the way that it works is that you all will start a lesson in the fall. Um, and sometimes maybe even sooner than that, depending on your situation. And usually about October is when we start band. And band meets once a week. Um, it actually meets before school starts. Now, I'm talking about all these things as if ne you know, next fall will be back to normal, and we're hoping that that's the case. So you may hear some things that are a little bit different um, in the fall compared to what I'm saying, but we'll, we'll work that out when we get there. But band meets one day a week. Uh, historically, it's been Brown on Monday, um, Lilja on Tuesday, Memorial on Wednesday, Johnson on Thursday, and then on Friday is Ben Hem. And each school is a little bit different and you'll get more information about that in the fall. So what do we do in band? Well, it's an opportunity for you guys that are learning band instruments and you'll sort of learn tonight which instruments we offer um, to learn what it's like to play in an ensemble, to follow a conductor. And that's sort of my role is to sort of help pull you all together. We do two performances. We do one in January and then another one in June. Um, and it's really a neat experience because you start basically most of you not knowing really anything about your instrument in September to really performing a really neat concert by the end of the school year in June. So it's kind of a, a nice soup to nuts of what band is like. Um, so if you have questions about some of those, you know, pieces of band as we go through the night, it, they'll probably get answered. So don't necessarily worry about them too much now, but as we go through the night, they'll, they'll likely get, get answered. But I'm very excited for the group this fall. I'm hoping we have a, a nice big one, especially to kick off after the pandemic. So welcome. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Drapeau, who's going to talk to you a little bit about the fifth grade band program. Good evening, everyone. So my name is Dave Drapeau. I'm the band director at Kennedy. And uh, the exciting thing about the band is when you get to the middle school level, there's lots of cool things that change. Uh, the first one is uh, when you're in elementary school, band meets once a, a week in the morning before school. But when you get to the middle school, it becomes part of your school day. So it's scheduled just like any other special. And it happens a lot more often. If you're at Kennedy, we do it three days in a row. And then the next three days of school, you go to your other special and then you come back. So we see each other a lot. If you're at Wilson, it's every other day. Um, super, super cool. So um, we also rehearse together as an entire band. So we might have two classes because the bands have gotten so big, but when we rehearse together, we're rehearsing the music for our concert and learning more about our instrument. We uh, put on at least two concerts a year, usually one in the winter time and one in the spring during a normal year. Uh, and there are multiple playing opportunities when you get to middle school. So if you want even more music, there's tons of stuff happening before school and after school, right? We've got um, uh, after school bands for fifth graders that just want more music. We've got after school bands for people that want to explore jazz music. We've got after school bands for people that want to be challenged and try some really interesting music and maybe even go off to competition. So it's really, really cool. You get to meet lots of new friends because you get to be off team with a big group of uh, bandmates. And if you're playing in some of those after school ensembles, you even meet and, and become friends with people in old and great. Really, really great. So um, it's good to uh, see you all tonight. I'm happy that you're here. And I'm going to turn this back over to Mr. Chisholm, who's going to tell you a little bit more about some of the other guests that we have tonight. So tonight we are uh, joined by uh, both band, uh, all, th all three band directors, all four band directors, uh, myself included, uh, Mr. Morrill from uh, Wilson, and um, as you met, Mr. DePoe from the Kennedy, and Mr. Rice would be uh, the band director at the, uh, for the fourth graders come this fall, hopefully again in person. Um, we have uh, Ms. Dombeck, Ms. Julia Dombeck is, our, uh, is a French horn teacher and teaches elementary music at Ben Ham. And uh, Larry Shea, Mr. Shea is a band director at the Wilson Middle School and uh, he'll be introducing some instruments. We also have uh, Sam Thurston, who is a lesson teacher and is the head of our lesson program here in Natick. Uh, we're gonna introduce these uh, instruments to you. You get to look at them. You can ask questions about them at the end. You start thinking about what it would be like to play them. Um, and we have a video of them being played by students and former students who went through the program who started just like you're thinking about doing right now. So first up tonight um, will be, who's first? Oh, Mr. Remster Morrill, if you could go next. 
Certainly, uh, and thank you, Mr. Chisholm. Uh, good evening, everybody. So uh, my name is Scott Morrill, and as Mr. Chisholm said, I am the band director over at Wilson Middle School, along with uh, Mr. Larry Shea, who's on here tonight. Uh, and we are going to start our uh, presentation on instruments tonight. I want you to think about how these instruments sound uh, and what they, you know, how they appeal to you as a listener uh, as you go forth on your journey trying to pick what instrument uh, you're going to play. So at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Rice, who's going to talk briefly about the flute. Flute. It's one of my favorite instruments. Um, when you're thinking about flute, Emma's going to do a nice demonstration here in a minute. Um, sometimes people say to me, Mr. Rice, I want to play and fill in the blank with the instrument. And like whether it's flute or clarinet or, and they say, but I want to know, is that really hard or is it really easy? You know, like, cause that's, you know, when you're 10, right? It's trying to figure that out, whether things are really easy or hard and you want to know. I always say every instrument is hard, but also there are easy parts of every instrument too. So when you're thinking about an instrument, I wouldn't think about too much whether about how easy or how hard it is, but how easy or hard it is for you. Cause when you guys hopefully, um, you know, get a chance to check out some of these, especially if you've got a, a relative or a friend who plays some of these instruments, you can kind of talk to them about it because some people say, well, Mr. Rice, the flute is really hard, isn't it? And I say, well, it depends because not everybody, you know, can get a sound right away. So maybe at the beginning it is hard, but later on it gets a little easier as you work on it and you keep practicing. Or for maybe for you, getting a sound on a flute isn't that hard right away. So some of the things to think about tonight as you're listening to the instruments um, is like, you know, does it speak to you? Like Mr. Morrill was talking about, like is, you can you connect with it. And thinking about like what the what people say about like how, what, you know, what was the challenge that for them? Because all instruments are challenging in their own ways. So just something to think about. So Emma is going to do a fabulous job presenting the fruit, flute. Mr. Morrill, if you don't mind, click and play. Hi, everyone. I'm Emma. and I'm a senior from Natick High School. I play the flute. And here, I'll show it to you. Um, here is it up here next to me. And if you look closer, you can see all the keys in here and the head joint over here. Um, I chose the flute in fourth grade just because it looked pretty and shiny, but also because it was small and light and I didn't want to have to hold a really big, heavy instrument. And I still love playing the flute now because there's always something for me to learn and there's something for me to improve on with my technique and my tone, and I can always learn more about it. And I think the flute would be great for you if you like a really clean, pure sound. So I'll play a little bit for you so you can hear. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, like Mr. Morrill said before, my name is Larry Shea. Um, I'm also one of the band directors at Wilson Middle School. Um, if you come to Wilson and you're doing band, uh, you would have me and Mr. Morrill for fifth and sixth grade. So that's where you would see me. And I have the pleasure to introduce our next instrument here, which is the oboe. So one thing um, about the flute and about this instrument is that they are both part of the woodwind family. Uh, the one thing you might have noticed about the flute was that there wasn't any particular uh, you know, piece of wood at the top that you might see that we call a reed. Pretty much all the woodwind instruments that we're going to be showing from this point on do have reeds, and the oboe in particular is called a double reed instrument. Um, as you watch this video from Henry in a little bit, you're going to see that the reed he has is very small, and there's two of them together, and then later on some of the other instruments we're going to play have a reed and also a mouthpiece. So you'll get to see how the reed kind of is really responsible for making a sound on a woodwind instrument. The thing about the oboe is that the oboe has been a very popular instrument for a long time. It's also a very special woodwind instrument because not a lot of people play it, but we're very fortunate in Natick that we have teachers and resources where you can. One thing to consider about oboe is that when you're listening to this video in a little bit and just, you know, kind of think about it on your own, think about the sound. The oboe is one of those instruments where when you play it the first time, you might think the sound's kind of 
maybe a little bit weird or not what you expected, but over time when you stick to it and really work on your sound and your playing, um, it could be a really awesome sounding instrument. Um, so we have uh, this awesome video from our uh, high school student, Henry, who's gonna talk a little bit more about that. And again, take a listen to the sound, look at the parts he's gonna show you um, and think about, do you think it's something that you might wanna try? Hi, my name is Henry Wicks. I uh, am a junior at Nedekai and I play the oboe. Here's the oboe. Here's the reed. Here's the whole thing. I uh, selected the oboe in fourth grade because I thought it sounded like the most unique and interesting instrument. And it looked like it too. Um, you may have heard that the oboe can't necessarily play as fast or as high or as low or as loud as some other instruments, but can do something that no other instrument can do, which is play a very unique and beautiful and sometimes haunting tone. Um, in my opinion, that's the most rewarding part about playing the oboe. And um, I can share some passages with you from the Poulenc Sonata, which is my favorite piece for the oboe. I chose these passages uh, from the Poulenc Sonata because I think they um, really show off the emotional depth and variety you can express with the oboe. Uh, starting with the more melancholy passage. All right, so the next instrument uh, that we have tonight uh, is the clarinet. Uh, the clarinet, uh, as Mr. Shea was talking about earlier uh, with the oboe, the oboe is played with a reed, or a double reed. Uh, the clarinet is played with a single reed that is uh, put on a mouthpiece using uh, a metal wrapping called a ligature. Uh, and I find the clarinet the most unique instruments in that it's so versatile, it can play jazz, it can play classical music. Uh, it's probably one of the four more famous instruments that, you heard, that you've heard in, in things like uh, Dixieland jazz and, and stuff like that. And it's so unique in that it has so many different characteristics. Uh, so it's my pleasure to introduce uh, May Soboff, a, a Natick High School graduate who's going to talk a little bit about the clarinet. Hey guys, my name is May Soboff. I am a senior at Natick High School. Um, and I've been playing the clarinet for nine years, so since I was in fourth grade. Um, the clarinet is so cool. I think you guys would really like it because it's similar to a recorder, um, but it's a little bit more advanced and a lot more fun, in my opinion. Um, so here's some reasons why I think it's really cool. Um, one of the reasons is, is that it has a really big range. So that means that the lowest note you can possibly play and the highest note you can play are really far apart. So that means you have a bunch of notes in between that you can play. Um, it also has a big dynamic range, which means you can play very soft notes and very, um, to become really loud, really fast, um, which is really fun. <laughs> and then I also love that you can find clarinet in almost any type of music. You can hear it in orchestral, you can hear it in jazz, you can hear it in classical, you can hear it in klezmer music, you can hear it in video game music. You can hear the clarinet almost anywhere, um, which is really fun because it opens up your opportunities for what type of music you can play, which the opportunities are endless. Um, so I picked out a piece a small piece that I think shows off the range of the clarinet pretty well so you can get an idea of what it sounds like. Um, and I wish you all the best of luck on trying to find the instrument that suits you best. Um, and enjoy band. <laughs> Uh, 
right, cool. So the next instrument that we're going to talk about tonight is um, the instrument that I play, uh, which is the saxophone. This is an alto saxophone. There's a lot of different saxophones in the saxophone family, but this is the instrument that you would start on if you chose saxophone for band. Just like flute and oboe and clarinet, the saxophone's a woodwind instrument, which means, um, like um, uh, Mr. Morrill and Mr. Shea said, it uses a reed. It's a single reed instrument. It looks like this, okay? And you put that on the mouthpiece with the ligature, like Mr. Morrill was talking about before with the clarinet. And we get our sound by wrapping our bottom lip and putting our top teeth on top, and then we blow. Right? It's pretty cool. And um, like the clarinet, it's got a home in the concert band, and it also has a home in the jazz band, which is pretty fun. That's, that's some of my favorite music to play. Right? So you get to play a whole bunch of different styles on it. And um, uh, one thing that sometimes turns people off from the instrument is it looks really complex. Looks like it's got a lot of keys and a lot of things that's ha a lot of things that is happening. But believe it or not, when you hold the saxophone, your fingers basically stay in the same space. So it's knowing which fingers to put down at what time. You don't have to move around. It's not necessarily as complicated as it looks. But uh, I'm not going to talk anymore. And I'm not going to play anymore. I'm going to turn over to Ellie to tell you a little bit more about it. Hi, my name is Ellie Pantakitis. I play the alto saxophone. And I chose to play the alto saxophone in fourth grade because my music teacher, Mr. Jodas, showed off an alto saxophone and I thought it was such a cool instrument and so unique that I decided that that's how I wanted to challenge myself musically. I still like the instrument today even after seven years of playing it because I never get bored doing so. There's so many things to learn on the saxophone but also in terms of music in general that the fun really never stops and along the way you're going to be able to do things and you'll pick up knowledge and you'll impress yourself in ways that you never thought you'd be able to. The saxophone is really good for everyone because the fingerings on the saxophone, meaning where you place your fingers on the keys to get the notes, are not that difficult to pick up. And then once you have those, you'll be making music and learning pieces in no time. So it's really just a blast if you commit to it. I really hope you choose to play the alto sax, but no matter what instrument you play, the mere fact that you're getting involved with music, and especially the music programs in Natick, is something that you won't regret because you'll make friends along the way, you'll surprise yourself, you'll impress yourself and those around you and you'll accomplish things. But most importantly, you're gonna have so much fun doing so and you will not regret that. So I hope you choose the saxophone, but good job for you for getting involved with music. <laughs> Everybody. My name is Mr. Thurston. I am the trumpet instructor uh, for the Native Public Schools. Um, and we are moving into a family of instruments called the brass family. So that includes the trumpet, the French horn, and then our low brass, so the euphonium. And later when you go into middle school, the tuba and the trombone. How could I forget the trombone? So we're going to start with the highest brass instruments and then work our way down. Um, the trumpet plays all of the highest notes of the brass family, um, which means that if you decide to pick trumpet next year, um, you're gonna have to be really good at blowing really fast air. So think about like blowing uh, birthday candles out. Um, the only difference is, as with all the brass instruments, we blow through our lips. So we buzz our lips to create the sound. That's different from the woodwind instruments that you've seen so far. So. If you pick one of the brass instruments, you will get your own instrument and a mouthpiece. And what you do to create this the sound is you just say M and then put air through your lips. Ah! And it makes that sort of kazoo sounding sound. Um, and then if you put that through the trumpet, it amplifies it to make it sound pretty cool. Ah! So, that's basically how all the instruments work, all the brass instruments work. Um, the trumpet, 
the the biggest question that I always get is, can it only play three notes? Because it only has three buttons. And that's a question that I had when I was in fourth grade. Um, the answer is no. We can play many, many more uh, 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 many more notes, excuse me. And the reason is we can go through a bunch of different notes by speeding up and slowing down the air. Um, and I think you'll see this in our next video from one of our, our high schoolers. His name is Gabe. He's going to show you Sorry, a lot of late. really cool things uh, that the trumpet can do, all sorts of different uh, cool effects that it can do. And I think he even has some tricks, too. So check out Gabe. Hello. My name is Gabe. I'm 17 years old. Uh, I'm a junior at Natick High School, and that means I'm in 11th grade. And I've been playing the trumpet since I was in fourth grade, which is eight years, I think, um, which is a really, really long time. But I still play the trumpet every single day because it's my favorite thing to do. Absolutely my favorite thing to do in the whole world. So I like the trumpet for a lot of reasons. But um, one of my favorite things is that sometimes I get to be the leader of the band. So the trumpet is really loud and bright, and it's very easy to hear it, even when other instruments are playing. So a lot of the time, it gets the most important part in a song. And I like to be the most important part in a band. So that's one of the reasons I like to play the trumpet. Um, a lot of people think that it's really easy just because it has three buttons. And they think that you can only play three notes with the trumpet. But that's actually not true. You can play every single note with the trumpet. Because um, every combination of buttons that you push down gives you a different note. Let me show you. You can even play a whole bunch of different notes without pushing down any buttons at all. So yeah, the trumpet is harder than most people think, but it's still really, really fun, and you can do some really cool stuff with it. Uh, let me show you some of my favorite tricks. <clears throat> Here's a fun one. That one's kind of silly. <laughs> uh, here's one I like a lot. Uh, and here's one more. So yeah, there's a lot of really fun and cool stuff you can do with the trumpet. Um, it's my favorite instrument. Um, and I really think that you should give it a shot. Because uh, maybe you'll love it just as much as I do. Thank you. Um, I'm going to finish the video off with one of my favorite songs. Wow, that was really impressive. Very good round of applause for Gabe. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Miss Dombeck. First of all, it's just, I just want to say, it's so good to see so many of you here. Familiar faces, both from Johnson and Ben Hem. Um, so great to see that you all came tonight. Um, so, I am the music teacher at Ben Hem, but I am also the horn instructor, or one of the horn instructors in the NPS lesson program. I started playing the horn about 15 years ago. It's crazy to think about, and I've loved every minute of it. I chose the horn because I loved its versatility. Like the trumpet, the horn can play some pretty high notes, but it also has a pretty big low range too, meaning we can play low and high and everywhere in between. We can also make a big variety of sounds, which make us a favorite for um, composers who like to use us in a lot of really cool music, like Star Wars, 
Jurassic Park, and Harry Potter. If you've ever seen those movies, you've definitely heard the horn featured prominently. Um, just like the trumpet, the horn has three keys. I have an extra fourth one. But when you start, you'll only have three keys. You'll play on a slightly smaller version of the horn, called the single horn. Um, and just like the trumpet, just the fact that we have three keys does not mean we can only play three notes. We can actually play a huge variety of notes with just one fingering, just like Gabe showed us in the trumpet video. So actually, I'm going to stop blabbing, and I'm going to turn it over to Keon, who's going to give a little demo. So let's see Keon play the horn. Hi, my name is Keon Zanapur, and I'm a senior at Natick High School, and I play the French horn. I chose this instrument in fourth grade because I loved the round and full sound that it made. I also chose it because I was told it was one of the more difficult brass instruments to play, and I personally love something that will challenge me. I like this instrument now because of all, all the opportunities it has given me. There aren't a lot of horn players, so just about every ensemble is going to be looking for more horn players to add to the group's overall balance. This will open up so many playing opportunities for you later down the road. You shouldn't get too caught up in the technical aspects of playing the French horn because once you put in the work to get the basics down, the rest is a piece of cake. One of the things I like most about the French horn is the wide range of notes you're able to play. You can play as low as a trombone and as high as a trumpet all in one instrument. It's really just the elite brass instrument, and I hope you now see that it's the right pick for you. All right, so uh, now we're looking at uh, another brass instrument uh, that has a little bit of a bigger mouthpiece. This is the trombone, and the trombone is unique in that it has no keys whatsoever or valves whatsoever. Uh, in order to change notes, it uses a slide. Uh, and as the slide gets longer, the notes go lower. And as the slide gets shorter, the notes get higher. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, Natick High School graduate, Carol Compton, who's going to talk a lot about the uh, trombone. Uh, and she is uh, a very excited trombonist. So I think you'll enjoy a little bit about the trombone. Hey guys, my name's Carol Compton. I I'm just from graduated from Natick High School, and I play the trombone. This is the same trombone that I played in um, sixth grade whenever I first started playing. It's my brother's trombone. That's honestly why I chose the instrument, because I wanted to be like my older brother, and I've absolutely fallen in love with it. The trombone's good for you. If you want to be in jazz band, you can play jazz. If you want to be in an orchestra or a normal wind band, you can do that. The trombone is needed in every single ensemble, every single musical play like everything needs a trombone always um if you decide you want to play lower you can play the bass trombone so don't go don't go to tuba yet stay with me and if you decide you want to play higher you can stay on a smaller horn like this that has a little bit less buttons over there um you shouldn't worry about how long your arms are because i was pretty short whenever i was younger and it was never a problem for me there's seven different positions <laughs> And seventh is that farthest out where you saw me shift my shoulder, but you never need to play in there. It, it's a it's a silly note. You don't need that note. Don't worry about it. So I'm gonna play a little bit of Jump Up Superstar from Super Mario Odyssey to so really just show off the three different types of trombones I have. I have this small one, which is what I started off on. I have a slightly bigger one with one valve. That's the step up trombone, and then the low notes that you hear are played by the bass trombone. Everyone should play trombone. Thank you. 
do. That's just a short minute long clip. So if you think that the trombone is the right instrument for you, which it definitely is because there's no going wrong with the trombone, you should definitely play it because it is the best instrument. All right. Well, if that didn't convince you to play trombone, I don't know what will. But going on to the next instrument here, we're going to talk about uh, what I first thought was a mini tuba. It's kind of like a mini tuba. Uh, this next instrument is called the euphonium. Um, so basically, like the trombone is a brass instrument, it's also known as a low brass instrument, the euphonium uh, kind of works similar to a trumpet, uh, usually has three valves, sometimes it can even have four. So if you are like, oh, the trombone sounds cool, but I kind of like the idea of playing the valves, um, euphonium is basically a combination of those two. Um, one thing about the euphonium that's really unique is that uh, its tone and its sound um, can be very, very unique and uh, very diverse. Um, you can also really get some beautiful tones out of it. And I think just one thing to say overall is that not too many bands have a lot of low brass players, a lot of trombones or euphoniums or even tubas when you get to maybe have a chance to play that later down the road. The euphonium, if you're ever interested in playing a low brass instrument, is a really good starter. Um, euphonium to tuba is actually not very hard to switch from because a lot of the fingerings become the same. It's just a bigger instrument. So if you're thinking about maybe you want to play the tuba one day, or maybe you just really like the sound of a low brass instrument, euphonium is a really good place to kind of start there. So um, I'm going to turn it over to April, um, and she's going to demonstrate a little bit about its sound um, and show you a couple more things about the euphonium uh, more than I could because I don't have one with me. So here you go. <laughs> Hi, my name is April Swerden, and I'm a junior at Natick High. I play the baritone or euphonium. I chose this instrument in fifth grade because Mr. Morrill needed people to play, but I ended up growing to love the instrument because of the fun parts that I've gotten to play during concert. The baritone or euphonium is good if you'd like to play trombone, but don't like the slide, or if you'd like to play trumpet, but find a larger mouthpiece easier to play. The euphonium also has a larger range of playing ability than the baritone, and you may be able to move up to euphonium once you've had a good amount of experience playing baritone. The following is a part from one of my favorite pieces that I played in freshman year. Let's see if you can recognize the tune. You get it? All right. And the last instrument that we're going to introduce today is percussion. Uh, I have my saxophone here, but I do not have um, beginning percussion instruments, so I'll just have to tell you a little bit about them. Uh, I want to start by talking about what percussion isn't. You might think when you hear the word percussion that you're thinking of um, percussion and drums that you hear maybe in your favorite band or on the radio, right, or your favorite music. That's drum kit, drum set. That's not what you would start on in a concert band. We use what's called orchestral percussion, and that's a whole bunch of different instruments, but you start on two main ones. The first one you start on is what we call the concert bells, and what it, it, what it is, you'll see it in the video, is it looks almost like the keys of a piano, and we use mallets for it so we can play melodies with the winds. Um, the other instrument is the snare drum. So when you're playing percussion, sometimes people pick it because they think it's a way, uh, they're, they're nervous about reading notes on the staff or about reading melodies, and um, that's just not true. We read music just the same as all other players in the band. Um, and if anything, sometimes it can be a little bit more work because you've got to do double duty, right? You've got to learn this uh, melody instrument and this rhythmic instrument, but it's a lot of fun. So I'm gonna turn it over to Ella so you can see uh, these two instruments back to back. Hi, my name is Ella. I'm a freshman at Natick High School and I play percussion. Here I have a snare drum and a bell kit. I chose percussion in fourth grade because I'd always been interested in drums and thought they'd be really fun to play. I also thought it was super cool that percussion instruments make sound in a different way than other band instruments and that turning the snare off and on changes the sound of the drum. 
I still love percussion now because it's super fun and there's always something new to do because you get to learn how to play many instruments from many different places. Also, some of my best friends and best memories have come from playing in band. Percussion is good if you want to play an instrument that you hit to make sound, rather than using your breath to make sound. And by playing percussion, you get to focus more on rhythms while also getting to play fun melodies. Here's some music from both instruments I have with me. Okay, folks, that is our uh, our instrument presentation for tonight. We um, we can take questions now, but it's um, it's time. Uh, you don't have to decide now. Certainly, I hope you got some information. Hopefully, you saw something that interested you, and uh, we certainly believe in what we do here with the instruments. Um, we can answer questions pretty generally, but we also, um, you can feel free to email any of the music teachers in town about the program. We're happy to tell you about if you have, well, I want to, I kind of like this instrument, but I think I'd be better at this one. There are just things about each, each instrument that um, that uh, make uh, make more sense for different kids, and uh, you should choose based on what you like and what you think you'll succeed at. Uh, having said that, we think you'll be successful in every whatever you want to try. If there's an instrument, if you start an instrument in September, and uh, you know a few months later you've turned out that you'd like to try something different, didn't work out, we have a program for that too, and um, you, you should you should be playing what you want. Um, I always tell the story, one of my closest friends, who's a world-class tenor sax player, uh, played three instruments before he landed on tenor sax, and um, he just kept trying things till he got what he liked, and we can do that as well. Anyway, I am going to here open up, if I can, oh, yeah, there you go. If you have questions, you can put them in the chat. I prefer we didn't unmute so it doesn't get uh, a little crazy in here, but if you have questions, please feel free. And uh, parents and students, if you look, I've typed in the name. Our, again, our vendor is davidfrenchmusic.com. And uh, all the information for how to rent and pricing and everything that goes with that, uh, they can do for you over there. Okay. Uh, from Olivia Stillwell. Good question. What time does band start in the morning in the fall? Uh, Mr. Rice, can you handle that one? Of course. Um, it depends on the school. The earliest is Ben Ham. We start at 730 um, the latest is at Memorial. Uh, we start at eight o'clock. So, it you know, depending on your school, if you're not at either Memorial or Benham, it would be somewhere in between. Very good. Next up, we uh, for percussion. What instrument does rising fifth grade get, Mr. Drapeau? Uh, th those instruments would be exactly what you saw in the video. We would start with snare um, bells, and we would spend a lot of our beginning uh, band classes on bells, learning about the staff and playing melodies with the other wind players. Good. And what was the instrument called that had the bit, the little bar thing that you moved? I think you're referring to the slide, the trombone, the slide trombone. Yeah, that's a trombone. Uh, Samantha Walsh asked for the instruments for keeps. Yes, the idea is that you would be uh, renting these instruments to own them through David French Music. We don't supply the instruments. Um, when you get a little older, so as we talked about, say you decide you want to be a tuba player, but we really don't start tuba players um, uh, at fourth grade. It's just they're just usually too big and a little too difficult. So if you start a euphonium, um, we do lend certain instruments that are a little more uh, costly. Uh, but the idea now is, yeah, you would buy and own your own instrument. It's, it's really fun. I, I you can't see behind me, but my instrument's behind me, too. It's great. Uh, what about string? Sami Ahmed asks, uh, we are going to be starting a string program here, but it's just not, uh, it was something we were hoping to get going this year, but we were up against it with COVID. So that's something that's not going to happen yet. Um, down here, what instruments can you use? Well, we showed you all the ones you can use here. Uh, Mario Solares, uh, when we run things, we do keep them at school or at home. They go home with you uh, every time. You just got to practice. You got to take them home and uh, and uh, work, uh, work on them at your house after your lessons. 
why are some of the instruments only allowed to play in fifth or sixth? Uh, again, that's about size. If you have one particular, you can ask about it, Luke. But it's um, pretty simply, we find that fourth grade is even even a very tall, very tall fourth grader when I was your age. And I don't think I could have handled a tuba or a lar larger one then. You know? Charlotte, of course you can. You can and you should. So Luan asked, what is the hardest instrument? And I think Mr. Rice said it best. I, I think it's, um, it, it depends. So this is going to sound funny, uh, even though I'm a band director, I really struggle to play brass instruments. I'm not good at the buzz. I can do it as much as I need to. Uh, meanwhile, you're sitting in here with uh, Mr. Moore, Mr. Rice, or trumpet players, and, um, you know, Ms. Dombeck and, and Mr. Thurston uh, play brass instruments, and the buzz is just easy to them. Um, some people find the idea of, so when you have the three buttons on a trumpet or on a French horn, some kids really like the idea of being able to move through what we call partials, which is getting different notes out of one, you know, one button, one valve. Uh, other kids struggle with it. They're all, I would say they're equally hard. They all have things that make them individual. And to sign up at the school, um, once we re we'll receive the list from David French Music of who has received instruments, and then we go from there. Uh, but we'll take care of that in the fall. Very good question, Noah. Thank you. Samantha, uh, I'm not sure what you're asking about reeds, but you buy your own reeds. You get them from David French is our recommendation. Yeah. Uh, um, what I was kind of saying is uh, how do you replace them? Uh, and you, also, like, what's the average price for a reed? I'm just asking. Yeah, it's a good question, Samantha. Um, I want I want to play a brass instrument, but I'm just asking for, like, if I wanted to. Okay, we'll leave that for Mr. DePoe as well. He buys reeds a lot. <laughs> well, you usually buy them in a box, something like this, so you get a handful of them at a time. And like anything else, they, they can range in price, but anywhere probably from, I don't know, $15, $20 a box to really expensive, maybe even like $40 a box, depending on what reads you're playing. Um, they last, uh, every read's different, but I would say that if you're playing every day for 15 or 20 minutes, uh, one read might take you through a couple weeks and then you start to notice some things like your tone gets a little bit fuzzy or it might be hard to play different notes that were easier early on. And that's the time to, to change it. And also you want to change it too because it goes in your mouth and it, it's good to change that out so it stays clean. Madeline Malone asks Mr. Rice, when do lessons take place? Are they in, within the school day? So lessons at the, at the fourth grade level happen during the school day, either during lunch or recess. So, and, and you don't miss your lunch, you just have lunch at a little bit different time. So if your lunch is at normally at 12.30 and your lesson happens at 12.30, you might have your lesson at 12.30 and then you have your lunch afterwards. Um, if it's during recess, then you just happen to miss recess for that day. But your um, lesson is just once a week, band is just once a week. So the lesson is 30 minutes and band is 40. So it would just be once a week that you'd miss recess if that's the case. Uh, once you get to middle school, it flips where a band happens during the school day, as Mr. Morrill and Mr. DeBoer were talking about earlier, band happens during the school day and then lessons happen after school. And Mr. Chisholm, are we going to be able to, um, if uh, in a circumstance where maybe somebody might do a virtual lesson, would that still be a possibility in the fall, are we thinking? Yeah, I think we're gonna look at it. We're gonna, um, we'd always prefer to be in person and I don't think we're gonna do anything virtual where you are 100% virtual, but where there's a, there's a hardship, um, where you do one virtual, one in person and alternating. I think we might be arranging that. I think that's something that works for some families, yeah. Thank you. Uh, so there's your lessons versus how do you get an instrument? Once again, Julian, I've put in the, uh, in the chat here the name of your vendor. You want to go over to David French Music. Uh, they do a great job over there. They're good friends of ours. Zion, me too. Charlotte, you saw it. You, uh, it's a slide. How do you play it? You buzz and you slide, and it sounds easy, but that's... Um, that's a little different. Approximately, what is the cost of lessons through school? I think Mr. Thurston has the answer for that one. So you pay by semester. So um, you'd sign up for 15 lessons for the first semester and um, everybody takes group lessons to start off. Um, I think we might, well, I, Mr. Chisholm and I will talk about whether or not we're gonna offer you know private lessons, but um, typically you take group lessons in small groups and that is, uh, 250 for the semester. And we have all the, by the way, for any parents on here, you can look up um, all of those small details on our website, um, which maybe we can post in the chat as well. Yeah, at the very end, we, we certainly need to update. I believe it's still. Certain. Yeah, we need to update it, but those those rates should still be there. So, yeah, and the rates have it, are not changing this year. 
Um, how many percussion instruments do students play in middle school, Mr. Morrill? You caught me, Mr. Chisholm. I was trying to get that link for you. Uh, so the uh, <laughs> the uh, number of instruments uh, that students will play in uh, middle school, I mean, it's going to range. Um, you know, percussion has such a wide range of instruments that you can play. I mean, you start at home with just a uh, snare drum uh, and your bell kit. And then when you come to school, you have things that are like your bell kit, like a xylophone or marimba or a vibraphone or things that are, you know, other types of drums like toms or uh, bass drum. Uh, you have all sorts of cymbals to play um, and all sorts of different types of percussion known as auxiliary percussion or even toy percussion uh, that you can use. So I'd love to put a number on it, but I don't know that I could put a number on it. Yeah, yeah it's a lot of them. Again, you learn with the teacher. So the question is, do you need to bring your instrument every day? And I think the answer, Mr. Rice, correct me if I missed this one. Um, you tend to have to bring it twice a week, uh, one day for band and one day for lessons. And that's, sometimes, is that true? That's right. Yep. That's and exactly right. Obviously, for some students, band and your lesson are on the same day. You only have to do it once. But it tends to be two is the average. Fourth grade, you do it after the school day. Everything's, it's band is before school, and then your lessons are during the school day. Um. My sister plays the saxophone. Do you recommend it? Uh, ask your sister. Does your sister recommend it, Luke? I do. I recommend it. Mr. DePoe really recommends it. You know, he's made a little lifestyle. Marley Pickering asks, how fast do people learn? And uh, I would I would steal that question and turn it into, um, as Ms. Dominic was talking about, she started on French horn, uh, she said, 15 years ago. And I would bet she would tell you she's still learning. That's what we do. Um, <laughs> Practice, practice, practice. You always have to. We do. That's what we do. Um, but as fast as how people learn, I think people tend to. Um, we have a really excellent elementary program. Mr. Rice, what he does with the fourth grade band, uh, it, it impresses me every time I see it. And our teachers in other towns, what they do is you'll have one music teacher. Um, so like your teacher at your school, whether it's Miss Dombeck, Miss Lissinsu, Mr. Rice, Mr. Jodas. Uh, Mr. Uh, Roper would also they they if they're the, they would might be the band teacher they'd also teach the lessons. What we do is we bring in people who actually specialize in your lesson. Your trombone teacher, if you play trombone, is a trombone player and not necessarily a trumpet player who could teach trombone, but it's a side instrument for them. We really do a really nice job with it here in Natick. We're very proud of it. Uh, Georgia, we answered that. And Samantha, no, the lessons are during the school day, bands before the day. How long can you practice after school? We think you should practice. Um, well, you can't be late for band. You got to be there if they say to be there. You got to commit to it. Lindsay Wood asked Mr. Rice, how long are the lessons at elementary? Or Ms. Dombeck, Mr. Thurston? 30, 30 minutes is the lesson at the elementary level. Yeah, so. I thought they were quite easy. Yeah. Um, how long do you have to practice? You practice as long as you need to to get good, and uh, you know. For f if I if I may, Mr. Chisholm, for because this is a good question about practicing, because it's a time commitment when you're participating in band. Um, I usually say, and the lesson teachers that hear that it can that jump in and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but at the beginning of the year, what I say to kids is at least five times a week for about ten minutes each time. Miss Dombeck and Mr. Thurston, would you agree with at least with that? Um, I'm getting nods, so I'm hoping yeah. it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> But as you go through the year, because things start getting a little bit more difficult and you guys start learning a little bit more, then you need to start practicing a little bit longer to sort of like keep up with everything else that's going on. So by the end of the year, for me, it's usually about 20 minutes, five, six times a week. And then that way, and maybe 30 minutes, especially if you're like cruising through the book, you may even want to be practicing longer. And we like to think of it, at least I do, is that practicing is fun. Like, you know, practicing shouldn't feel like chore because it's fun to play your instrument like some of the others have talked about tonight. So I'm hoping that you guys like to practice as much as um, we do because we like playing our instruments because that's, that's what we signed up for. So practicing can be fun. So um, I'm going to answer Emma's question here. It says, do you have lessons with people who play different instruments or only the same? You, If you play a clarinet, there's only clarinet players in your lesson. If it's oboe, it's oboe. Uh, we, do, we make sure you're only with people who are trying to understand the same technical things on your instrument. Uh, Mr. Rice, we have a few questions coming in that are all uh, very much up your alley um, regarding mornings and getting the instruments there. And um, so when the band starts, it's pre—it's before the bus. Isn't that true? 
That's right. So, so the re for band in the morning, the way that it works is you have to have mom, dad, somebody drop you off. So if I'm a, if I'm a Ben Hem student and Friday morning is when I have band, you need to be able to ha get to school. And usually we start getting to arriving to school, you know, 720 is the earliest we arrive. And then we start right at 730. Um, that is a little bit of a challenge, but usually we can arrange carpools. So if you, you know, maybe mom or dad work and you just need to have somebody pick you up, we can usually help you arrange that. It's not a big deal. Um, and then that way, you know, you're there for band because being part of band is as important as taking the lesson because it's when you get a chance to sort of hear all of the instruments together. So it's, it is very important. Um, what were some of the other questions that you were talking about, Mr. Chisholm? Um, you have one. Yeah, I think you answered it. It's um, uh, there's a lot of questions me. about a lot of questions about whether or not you can bring the instruments in the bus. That's a tricky question because some instruments, it's kind of like a flat out no. The ones that are really big, like that take up a seat, they don't allow them on the bus. So that can be a challenge too. Um, some of the smaller ones, it's kind of like up to your bus driver, is what I usually say. Because sometimes, like flute is one they just allow on the bus because it's just, you know, fits in your backpack, it's not a big deal. Clarinet sometimes too. But sometimes even the smaller instruments, if you have a really crowded bus that you go on, even then they might say there's just not enough room in the bus. So the the best answer I have for you in terms of whether or not your instrument goes on the bus is to ask your bus driver because they will know your bus situation better than than others. And if I could add to that, Mr. Rice, as well, um, contact your band teacher if you're having trouble with your instrument, uh, getting it to and from, because there's a lot of times that we can help you out to make sure that whatever instrument you want to choose, that we're able to make sure that you can do that. So I'm seeing a, a few of the questions I'm getting at this point, folks, are very much will be answered in September. Um, uh, regarding what time you have to be there for this or when do you start playing or when do you get the instruments again you can contact david french music through the link i sent a few times in this chat regarding um, when it's time to pick up and that kind of thing but because of covid we're coming out of this and we'll let you know we're we're, we're, we're still making our plans for september and um what time things are happening and uh how we are going to get back to um playing the way we want and not on a TV screen here is, um, is where we're going, you know. Um, the lessons are in person, band is in person. Well, we're hoping band is in person, lessons are in person. That's the plan. Again, these, are, these questions are very much, um, we'll let you know in September. Piano and guitar are not in the band, the rug of. Um, I would say that that makes an hour. I think that's a good, solid, uh, solid amount of time we're going to close this down now but going forward if you have any questions uh your music teacher at your school um can give you any answers you need or um you can get questions to myself or or mr rice if he's not if, you, if you're not a memorial if it's more specific uh by letting your teacher or your um uh, your school principal know and they can get in touch with us and give you all the information you need um, but this was to, uh, you know, start thinking of what instrument you want to play and, uh, we'll see you in September. Very good.